welcome to SVG TV News on Monday, May 27th, 2024. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez announced today that May 21st is likely to be made a national holiday here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The holiday is in response to calls made by Spiritual Baptists in recognition of Spiritual Baptist Liberation Day. At a news conference today in the Cabinet Room, where he updated the nation on his recent overseas visits, the Prime Minister expressed his support for the day to be made a public holiday. No, yesterday, everybody came together. It's a good thing to see. I will, I will, um, I'm going to talk to the cabinet and I put it out for the public. Um, I, I, I think it's the idea, what they're asking for, a holiday. They appreciate the death recognition. They appreciate all this, the things which have been done. Um, May 21st which is the day they recognize as the day which they mark their freedom to worship. By 1912, the colonial government passed a law saying that spiritual baptism, that shakers, they call them, there's a blot on our civilization, they got support from established churches too. I'm talking about the colonial government. It was illegal, a criminal offense for them to practice the faith. The Prime Minister noted that the proposal will be taken to cabinet and he will also engage the public on the matter. People say, well, you, if you give them a holiday, what about <clears throat> other churches? Well, the simple answer to that in my view is that the other churches never had were never made illegal to practice. And in an era when we were doing our repairing, we had to do some reparations at home too. So I will give it support. Um, but I don't run a I don't run a dictatorship. So I have to go to cabinet but I'm putting it out also for pub for the public to respond. And I, I believe that overwhelmingly people would agree with what I'm saying. You know, the, the way in which I've made the case in a, in a simple, straightforward way. And um, that is the case. We will, we, will, we will get the law put in place. The Prime Minister is hopeful that the holiday can come into effect in time for the first observance on May 21st, 2025. And Prime Minister Gonzalez outlined discussions held during his one-week trip to Taiwan, which he said will help to further strengthen relations between the two countries. One of the meetings was with the management of Mackay Memorial Hospital in Taipei. Reporting on the meeting, Prime Minister Gonzalez stated that his government is hoping for the hospital to conduct a medical mission to SVG annually. A, a, a long session with the hospital with which we have links is called the Mackay Memorial Hospital. And we want to see further strengthening of relations between the common at least one mission per year. And they're very much integrated into the delivery of our health services, just like all approved external missions. And it's a, this, this is a very interesting hospital. They have three actually across um, Taiwan, but this is the major one in Taipei. Outlining the Mackay Hospital's mission and vision, the Prime Minister noted that it aligns well with core values. The mission, in the spirit of Jesus Christ, love others as we love ourselves, showing concern for the disadvantaged, providing holistic medical healing for the body, mind, soul, and achieving medical evangelism. It's a hospital which was founded originally. This is, a, this is a hospital older than the Republic of China. The Republic of China was founded in 1911. This hospital is older than that. There was a missionary which came from Canada 
and they have expanded. So their mission, though it's a country largely with Buddhists, that's their principal religion. You have a Christian hospital there. That's the, that's the mission. What is their vision? To become the medical center that is most trusted by vulnerable groups. To become the Christian hospital devoting the most resources to medical evangelism work in remote areas. The Prime Minister is hopeful that there will be an exchange of medical professionals between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Republic of China on Taiwan. They come here, you know, and people comment on them and the valuable work that they do. They say some Taiwanese medical professionals come, but they, they, they don't know what drives this institution. And what you have in your head is very important as to what comes out in your hand and all your various skills, values. Now, we are hoping that, hoping that we will see some strengthening both in relation to the, the number of visits they could make and very importantly, exchanges that some people can come from them and stay here for a little while and some some professionals and some of our professionals can go there and stay with them for a while a very important interchange as we are developing for instance among nurses with certain institutions in the united kingdom currently Prime Minister Gonzalez is expected to lead SVG's delegation to the Fourth International Conference of Small Islands Developing States, SITS4, which got underway today in Antigua and Barbuda. In other local news now, we hear that the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Bureau of Standards, in collaboration with the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standard and Quality, CrossQ, is hosting a one-week workshop in quality management systems. The quality management systems training is financed by 4.5 million euros under the 11th European Development Fund Economic Partnership Agreement Technical Barriers to Trade Program. Delivering the feature address during the opening ceremony of the workshop held earlier today at the Lafayette Hotel. Hotel Conference Center, Minister of Agriculture Supporter Caesar, who holds responsibility for the Bureau of Standards, said the workshop aims to ensure that stakeholders increase their competitiveness as it pertains to agriculture. Minister Caesar noted that a challenge to meet local, regional, and international standards is an issue that has to be addressed. Meanwhile, Executive Director of the Bureau of Standards, Edra Ledger, pointed out that globalization has challenged traditional producers to reflect on quality. He said the objective of the workshop is to train and bring sensitization to stakeholders in the public and private sectors to help boost their competitiveness. Ledger also welcomes the training opportunity not only to bring awareness to the stakeholders but to foster investment in quality capacity to further develop and implement quality management systems in SVG. He said the Bureau is also moving to introduce a certified quality management system within the next two years to serve as a badge of competence and confidence in their service delivery. Meanwhile, consultant of the Quality System Solutions and Initiative, Dr. Cheryl Anderson, said the training workshop will focus on the development of policies and procedures, technical specifications of product and service quality, the difference between quality control and quality assurance risk towards achieving objectives of gap assessment of the participating agencies for international certification. The controversial crime statistics billboard erected by the opposition New Democratic Party, the NDP, has elicited a strong response from Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. During a news conference today, the Prime Minister expressed concern over the timing of the billboard's installation, highlighting that it coincided with a significant event at Sandals Resort St. Vincent, which hosted several international travel advisors and journalists. Prime Minister Gonzalez also pointed pointed out that the NDP did not obtain a necessary permission from the Lands and Survey Department to erect any of the three billboards it has installed. How the how they, 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 they people are fresh to send a notice tell the NDP must move them within a day. Well, that's the standard notice form they give you. 
But they also said to you, we're giving you this notice. And they're telling you to take it down. Or you could apply, ask for a stay and apply for permission. <laughs> or you could appeal this notice if you if you if you feel like. The law is there and they, they and that I must go and take it down myself. <laughs> that is what passes for discussion. I, I'm not even putting up the billboard. <laughs> All I know, it shows a lack of love for country, because you are contribute to match it up. It's the same way that this Canadian leader from Beckway <laughs> wanted to wanted to, to, to stop the airport opening. In his response, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday told Estrogy TV News that an application has since been submitted to the Lands and Survey Department. He also detailed the reasons for erecting the billboard, emphasizing their importance in raising public awareness on matters affecting the country, including crime. The applications to the planning department, so we expect to get a response and then a favorable response. Um, we are in compliance. Um, with the procedures under the Act. So we're just awaiting their decision. In the meantime, the board stays where it is. The billboard is, is there where um, it attracts attention because that's the purpose of a billboard, is to attract attention to a problem that we um, in the Democratic Party have been seeking to draw attention to for a long, long time. And um, the government treats it in a way that uh, seems to, uh, to imply or to indicate that the crime situation in the country is not a serious one, so I'm glad that it has attracted so much attention. Nothing to do with Sanders. This is a matter, um, you put a billboard in a location that is going to be visible. We have one in Villa, we have one um, here. If you had put it in Villa, they would have said it's because of Villa or whatever. They don't like the message about crime in the country. That is a fact. You know, there were 55 homicides that year, three of them who said were police uh, killing, so we had 52 um, homicides that were and not police killings. In more local news now, we hear that the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadines Police Force is mourning the death of Corporal 118 uh, Vandy Bruce. Corporal Bruce, who was attached to the port security, died in a motor vehicle accident in Hopewell, Mesopotamia on Sunday morning. Speaking on radio today, Constable Rick Hunt of the Traffic Department of the RSVG Police Force expressed condolences to Bruce family, members and friends on behalf of the Commissioner and other members of the RSVG. SVGPF. Over the weekend period, there has been a total of four reports of motor vehicle collision to the police. It is with profound sadness and a heavy heart that I must inform the general public that among the number of motor vehicle collisions reported over the weekend, one of those accidents resulted in a fatal accident claiming the life of one of our very own, Vandy Bruce, Corporal 118, who was a serving member of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, attached to the port security. On behalf of the Commission of Police and other rank and files of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, I extend sincere condolences to his family and friends in their time of bereavement. Sergeant 189Cs of the Traffic Department is the investigator for this collision to ascertain the exact cause of the collision and a post-mortem is expected to be carried out on the body to ascertain the exact cause of death. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Constable Hunt said the traffic department has noted a rise in motor vehicle collisions involving pedestrians even in locations where pedestrian crossings are present. To reduce collisions of such nature, we are sensitizing both motorists and general public on a few things they can take into consideration when using our roads. As it pertains to the driver, one, be, use extra caution when driving in hard to see conditions such as nighttime or bad weather. Two, slow down and be prepared to stop when turning or otherwise entering a crosswalk. Three, 
follow the speed limit, especially around people on the street, in school zones, and in neighborhoods where children are present. And four, be extra cautious when backing up or looking for pedestrians. And look for pedestrians, sorry. Constable Hunt used the opportunity to urge pedestrians as well as motorists to abide by the traffic laws and signs. Sidewalks whenever they are available. Three, if there is no sidewalk, walk facing traffic and as far from traffic as possible. Four, if a crosswalk or intersection is not available, locate a well-lit area where you have the best view of traffic. Wait for a gap in the traffic that allows enough time to cross safely. Continue watching for traffic as you cross. And in following these tips and more, I assure you that you will be contributing in reducing collision of this nature and making our roads safer for everyone. Janaila Lewis Charles of the Georgetown Government School copped the Prime Minister's Challenge Trophy after emerging the winner of the Parmenasburg Government School's first zonal public speaking competition. Lewis Charles is the first winner of the competition held on Thursday, May 23rd, at the Parmenasburg Government School in Byra. Lewis Charles won the prepared speech category with Soha and her fellow competitors debating on the topic Should sugary food and drinks be banned in schools? Javier Thomas of the South Rivers Methodist School won the impromptu category to secure the second position. Thomas spoke on the topic if I were the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for one day. Third place went to Rolando Richardson of the Parmenasburg Government School and fourth to Kenika Clouded of the Lanley Park Government School. Chairperson of the Parmenasburg Government School Literacy Committee, Lystra Huggins, in her remarks, said the school has been hosting internal public speaking competitions annually in the month of May to celebrate Literacy Week. The school extended its competition to neighboring schools this year, which Huggins said is to help promote the development of public speaking as well as important soft skill among students. Breastfed children are most likely to excel academically than those who were formula fed. This is according to community dietitian Melody Hercules, who was discussing the advantages of breastfeeding for a mother and child. She noted that there is a noticeable distinction between a breastfed child and one who was formula fed. So that's just first. On the list. Second, it also, there's many health benefits. It helps them. It helps, as I mentioned before, it helps the prevention of allergies and sensitivities. Um, it helps to reduce their risks of developing NCDs. Now, it's not going to stop them from developing, but it helps to reduce the risk. Now, when they start eating, what you feed baby can change that, but it helps It helps in the process of reducing the risk of developing NCDs. It helps um, increase brain activity, lower the risk of developing asthma. Um, SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome, it helps to prevent that. And gastrointestinal issues so there are a lot of health benefits for babies and for children who are breastfed and also educationally it helps them to excel and do better in school Hercules encouraged breastfeeding mothers to persevere through the six months breastfeeding recommended for infants everybody's experience is different it may not always be the easiest but still push through, still continue with it because at the end of the day, breastfeeding has so many benefits for both mommy and baby. And baby is getting all the nutrients they need from you. For the first six months, exclusive breastfeeding. We encourage up to two years, even if the toddler wants to continue after that, because we have had persons who said they breastfed up to five years right before um, your child went to school. That's okay but for six months exclusive breastfeeding before you start introducing anything else into the diet baby is getting enough milk and enough energy from you the 2024 calypso season is expected to officially commence tomorrow may 28th and great things are anticipated for this season this is according to president of the svg calypso association earl kaba bennett who on radio today stated his impression of the calypso songs released thus far for the 2024 season or different styles have a person going upbeat that and that is some them some Calypsonians singing that way and you hear the your audience saying that they need more upbeat songs you cannot 
restrain or constrain a man or limit a man because they just tell and tell him nothing a certain way. Mm -hmm. But the, if other Californians sing up beat song because I always hit the persons, all those songs that you hear in the yesteryear, they were called soul, more even more man. All those are upbeat and they were well put together, up on fun. Classic piece of work, yeah. particular. Again, I am not saying and do respect it. Do respect every Californian to sing an upbeat song. We need some humor in the Californian because, after all, especially in the end, we are there to entertain. Mm. And when persons are entertained, when they are satiated and satisfied, they will spread the world and then they will bring other persons to come to the tent. Bennett is encouraging members of the public to support the graduates' Calypso tent, which will host a first show for the season tomorrow night. Come out in your numbers. Come out and support Calypso. Come out and support graduates. Come out and support upstairs experience. Come out and support onto and come out and support Dynamites. This is part of us. We need your help. So come out in your numbers. Come out in your underwear and be where you ought to be on those days, seven hours. <laughs> I expect to see you there. Thank you very much on the bottom of my heart on behalf of the SUGC, the Simulator and Scholarship Association. The Upstage Experience will host its first show on Wednesday, May 29th and on tour on May 30th, 2024.